now evaluate different locations. How do we decide in our location planning which location to choose? Well, there are a number of methods for location planning. There's locational break-even analysis, transportation method, factor rating analysis, center of gravity, low distance technique using Voronoi polygons, or to use a locational analysis software. Let's look at the first one, locational break-even analysis. In this case, what we're doing is we're looking for the location that will have the least cost or the highest profit. So let's assume that we have four locations. They each have a fixed cost and a variable cost. For this example, let's assume that the price we're going to charge for our product is going to be the same regardless of which location we choose to make it at. In which case, we are looking for the least cost location. So what we need to know is we need to know what our forecasted demand is and we need to find the best location based on that forecasted demand. So in fact we can write up formulas for each of these locations and so we look at location A so here's our cost for A and it's going to be our fixed cost of 250000 Plus, we have a variable cost of $11 in a year per unit. So we're going to have to multiply that times whatever our forecasted quantity is. For B, we have a fixed cost of $100,000. Plus, we have a variable cost of $30 per unit in a year. Okay. For C, it's 150,000 for our fixed cost, and then our variable cost is $20 per unit, so we'll multiply that times Q. And finally, we have location D, which has a fixed cost of 200,000, plus a variable cost of 35 times the quantity. So which location would be better if the forecasted quantity was 12,000 units? Well, we simply sub in 12,000 for those Qs to determine which would be better. And so 250,000 plus 11 times 12,000, and for B, 100,000 plus 30 times the 12,000, and 150,000 plus 20 times the 12,000, and 200,000 plus 35 times 12,000. We can do this by hand and get the calculations. We can also do this in Excel. Because often you don't have a single forecasted quantity, you might have a range of quantities. So let's take a look at this in Excel. In this case, what we want to do is we want to make a column that represents the quantities. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it better. And then we're going to have a column for location A, a column for location B, for location C, and location D. The quantities, in this case, let's do them in increments of 1,000. So we'll just drag down so we can see. And of course, within there will be the 12,000 that uh, we want to find out. For location A, we determined that formula was 250,000 plus 11Q. So equals 250,000 plus 11 times our quantity. For location B, it's 100,000 plus 30 times the quantity. Okay. And for location C, it's 150,000 plus 20 times the quantity. Let's double check the number of zeros here that we have the right number. Okay, and for location D, we have 200,000.
plus 35 times the quantity. And we can drag this information down. So notice if our forecasted demand is 12,000, then we would find the location that has the lowest cost. And the lowest cost location at a forecast demand of 12,000 is location A. If we're not sure what the forecast demand will be exactly, but we have a range, then the best thing to do is to take this information and insert a scatter plot. And let's make it some lines we can see. And so as we look at our scatter plot here, notice that if our forecasted quantity is below 5,000, then location B is the best option. It gives us the lowest cost. If the forecasted demand is above 15,000, then location A is a better option. And notice that location D, which has a high variable cost and a high fixed cost, is never the best choice. So if you're forecasting and your forecast is a range, then plot a sp scatter plot and look for the lowest cost. If you know specifically the forecasted demand, then simply plug those quantities into your formulas and find the lowest cost. If there are different prices for which you can sell your product, then you need to look at, instead of cost, you need to look at profit, in which case we need total revenue minus total total revenue minus total cost. So you would take your cost formula that you have here, but you would need to subtract it time from the quantity that you're selling times your revenue per unit or the price. So you would take the formula that you have, for example, here, and you would need to subtract it from the quantity times the revenue to find the optimal one. And in this case, if you're doing profit, you want the maximum. If you're doing cost, you of course want to find the minimum. Now, this looks simply at the cost to manufacture based on fixed and variable cost. But we can take it one step further by looking at a scenario where we have an additional transportation cost. So to get the finished product to our customers, we also have to move it in which case the cost is going to increase. So our new cost calculations, for, for example, for location A, would be the fixed cost of 250000 plus our variable cost. But we also have to add to that the transportation cost, which is also per unit. So in this case, we add things that have the same. So these both have Q in them, so we can add them together. So 250,000 plus 23Q, and then we would insert our forecast demand in for Q. So for location B, we have 100,000 plus our 30Q for our variable cost, plus our 2Q for our transportation cost. So that's 100,000 plus 32Q. For location C, we have 150,000 plus our variable cost of 20Q, plus the additional transportation cost of 16Q. So that's 150,000 plus 36Q. And then location D was 200,000 plus variable cost of 35. plus we have transportation cost of 1Q, which gives us 200,000 plus 36Q. 
And so we would take our forecast demand, if for example we forecast the demand to be 12,000, and we would insert that in for these Qs, and we would again find the lowest number. If you are doing this in Excel, we'll go back to our Excel formulas here, then we simply need to adjust the formulas that are in um, our four columns to add in that transportation cost. So we had 250,000 plus 11Q and we simply need to add 12 more. For B, we had 100,000 plus our 32Q. So you could retype it in as well. And for C, we had 36Q. And for D, we had also 36Q. So let's go to D, turn that into 36Q. And let's take all four of those and drag them down. So we have our new calculations that include our transportation costs. At a forecast demand of 12,000, we can see that the best location now is location B. And if we are forecasting a range, we will insert scatter plot. And let's blow this up a bit so we can see. So notice now, if your forecasted demand is below 15,000, B is the better option. Above 15,000, location A is the better option. So we're looking for the lowest cost. And the only difference between this transportation method and the locational break-even method is that we have added a transportation cost, which is a variable cost. It depends on the quantity we're transporting uh, to that overall cost. Just like with the locational break-even analysis, if you are selling for different prices, then you're going to need to maximize your profit instead, in which case we're looking at total revenue minus total cost. Your total cost is going to include your fixed variable and transportation costs, and your total revenue is going to be the quantity you sell, same quantity that's in this formula, times the revenue or price you sell it for.